Hello friends, I'm Fide Instructor Atul Dahale and welcome to my YouTube channel. Today, I'm back with yet another interesting classical game for you and this time, the game which we are going to see was played between Zuckertort and Blackburn. Yes, in the year of 1883, in London International Open, this game was played. And, well, before we go towards the game, I would like to say a few words about the players. Who was Zuckertort? Zuckertort was a very famous player in past. We all know this thing that the first World Chess Championship match was played in the year of 1886 and it was won by William Stennis. But who was his opponent? His opponent was Zuckertort. And Blackburn. What to say about Blackburn? Blackburn was very famous by one name that is the Black Death. Well, why was he called as Black Death? Because he was so much famous for his aggressive play that he used to just kill his opponents on the board and that's why this game is very special and the game started with a very uh, simple opening and the very strategical middle game was also played but we will be seeing some interesting fireworks which will be played in the end of the game so without further delay let's get started with the game but before we go further i would like to say that don't forget to like this video and subscribe to my channel if you are new here so let's start here the game was started with c4 okay white was zuckertot black was blackburn c4 e6 and now e3 we know this thing that e3 is not that much common but the theory was developing at that time okay so knight f6 was played after knight f3 b6 was played obviously black is trying to develop the bishop on b7 to put some pressure on this diagonal white replies with a very calm move that is bishop e2 bishop b7 was played and he castles well white is following the simple rule that just develop your pieces and castle as soon as possible in the game and then go for the middle game strategies okay so black plays d5 he's playing in the center of the board which is a very common thing you can say and white plays d4 he's also controlling the center you can say black has already played d5 and e6 he is having good control in the center plus the knight is also having good control so white says like okay i will also control the center because we know this thing that in the opening phase there are three things which are very important one thing is like you should control the center second thing is that you should develop your pieces as quickly as possible and the third most important thing is you should safeguard your king and that's what these top players are doing at that time okay Bishop d6 was played, then knight comes in the c3, castles, and now we should think about the bishop on c1, which is not yet developed. So there are two chances. One is like we can play bishop d2 followed by rook c1, or we can play b3 and bishop b2. So he chose the latter one, he played b3, knight was developed on d7 square, bishop b2. Now whenever the bishop's diagonal will be open, it will be very good position for white. But obviously black will not just play d into c4 and allow this kind of d5 moves just like that. But we should remember this thing that this bishop is having a very great potential under him. Okay. So bishop was played there, queen e7. Black is obviously trying to play e5 in future. So here white played a very surprising move. Usually you can say that uh, anybody who, who is a normal or good player he knows this thing we should develop a new piece on every move and by that analogy you can say that we can play rook c1 or maybe rook e1 in this position or even i will even say queen d2 or queen c2 but what zuckertot played in this position is very interesting he played knight b5 well why is he playing this move he is moving the same piece again and again in the opening he already played knight c3 he could have played different piece also but he plays knight b5 because he understand that in this position the e5 was on the go right and another thing is that if you compare the two bishops in black scam then the bishop on d6 is looks much more powerful because it is aiming towards the h2 square also and it is helping to control the center so that's why to take advantage of two bishops he goes for knight b5 threatening capturing the bishop on d6 and if he manages to capture the bishop on d6 then he will be having two bishops okay so black says like okay Moving the bishop cannot really help him because if you play bishop b4 again we can play a3 and bishop needs to go back and white will definitely capture the bishop. So he plays knight to e4 controlling the center and putting the knight in the center of the board is a good strategy and without any hesitation Zuckertot plays knight into d6. Black blend played c into d6. This is also a good move I'll say because okay you can play queen into d6 but 
if you see a little bit deeper in this position black wanted to play c5 this e5 kind of a move that's why he plays c into d6 now the center is more straightened knight is not able to come on e5 square and i will say that even though black has lost the bishop pair advantage in this position he has got something that is there in the center of the board okay so the game continues knight d2 because the knight on e4 is a very strong piece we need to exchange it knight d f6 he is trying to maintain the knight on the e4 square but zuckertot was very stubborn he wanted to control the center so that's why what will you play in this position to control the e4 square yes you are absolutely right we must play f3 in this position in order to take control of the e4 square then knight into d4 was d2 was played queen into d2 and now he plays d into c4 obviously he wants to open up this bishop's diagonal that's why he is going for d into c4 and after bishop into c4 well you can say like okay just now you opened up the diagonal but why are you playing d5 i was also a little bit surprised by this move but one more thing you should also pay attention that white is ready to play e4 and if he gets uh, more pawns in the center of the board then these two bishops will be doing good job because the pawn might be moving forward here or here and this bishop might be opened up this bishop is also ready to come in the game so black plays d5 but this move definitely has a drawback that the bishop on b7 will be feeling very very bad in this position and we will see in future also that bishop on b7 which is a passive bishop will be showing some trouble okay so bishop d3 was played rook f c8 now in this position what will you play your opponent is trying to get the control of the c file so any normal player or a standard player will definitely play rook a c1 in this position which is a good move i'm not denying that it is not a good move but the move which was played in the game shows that why great players are great and why normal players are normal in their thinking here normally we will say that we should not give up the open file for our uh, opponent okay so we will play rook a c1 but in this game zuckertot played rook a e1 well his thought process is like this he wants to see that in future whenever he is going to play e4 he should have good number of pieces especially the rooks in the center of the board another thing is that even if you are controlling the c file with his rook rook a c1 the pieces will be exchanged and mass exchanges will not really help him because everything will be happening in the center of the board if the center gets opened up then the two bishops will be doing some wonder in this position that's why he plays rook a e1 now rook c7 black tries to control the c file but you can see that the all the entry points for the rook are completely closed here c4 is not there c5 is not there c3 is not there c2 is not there c1 is there because everything is being controlled by the bishop or the pawn in this position so you you should not be afraid of uh, giving up the c file in this position so rightfully zuckertot goes for the e4 move trying to open up the center he doesn't open up he plays rook a c8 black blackburn is uh, very stubborn about controlling the c file but in this position it is not really helpful for him he goes for e5 opening up this bishop and also dislodging this defensive piece which was very important from black's point of view he goes knight e8 and now it's time to push our pawns to f4 f4 square idea is obviously to play f5 and trying to open up the f file so that the rook will also be on a good file so he plays g6 trying to block the f file okay one more thing is that knight g7 is also one of the moves which might happen in future so in this position what to do your rook on uh, f1 is doing good job the bishop is also doing a good job this queen is also okay whenever it, the pawn will be played on f5 the queen also be ready to jump here and this bishop is doing good job of defensing defensive here in this position there is only one piece which is not doing a great job that is the rook on e1 because the e file is four, completely blocked so here zuckertot plays rook e3 bringing the rook in the game now the idea is quite clear we want to play rook h3 or maybe first f5 then rook h3 and queen h6 going for black king so black played f5 in this position trying to block everything so there are two options one is obviously we can go for something like rook to h3 and the game will go on but here white understood that he needs to open up the position because if he allows to close down the position it will not be good for him so he plays e into f6 then knight into f6 was played and now it's time to break through that's why we will play f5 move obviously if you play g into f5 then bishop into f5 the pawn on e6 will be <laughs> 
hanging so he plays he tries to block everything in the e file so he plays knight e4 bishop into e4 d into e4 and now f into g6 well in this position after f into g6 black seizes his opportunity and he says like okay the bishop on d3 was there it was controlling the c2 square but now i can play rook to c2 and attack the queen but in this position he did not see what was coming here white played a brilliant move that was g into h7 well after g into h7 there is a big trap also is there if you play king into h7 let's suppose then we can obviously give rook h3 check wherever the king moves we can bring our queen in the game queen h6 and the moves like uh, queen h8 followed by rook to h7 are going to be checkmate if you play queen g7 obviously rook g3 and the game will be over very soon because we can say that the queen will be lost and the game will be over that is also one of the thing and another thing queen into e6 is also one of the best moves in this position because queen f7 will not be helpful because of rook h8 king h8 and queen into f7 okay this is one of the best variation another thing is also that d5 check is always there so definitely black is losing after he captures the h7 pawn so he plays king h8 and this is the position why this game is very very famous guys this position which we are going to see has already made itself in many puzzle books okay so here pay attention to what white played white played d5 move he's not caring about anything he's saying like i want your king in this position okay d5 so black obviously wants to block this bishop so he plays e5 and now the surprise surprise yes there is a surprise for you and here white played amazing move that is queen to b4 he is ready to give up his queen yes because if black captures the queen in this position okay if queen into b4 is played the checkmate is going to happen very soon we'll just see how the checkmate might happen there are different alternatives for you first is bishop into e5 check king into h7 and now we have different moves we can play uh, rook to h3 okay then king might come to this square king to g8 and now what will you do we don't need to play anything we just play rook g3 check king will be gone to h6 uh, h7 or f7 wherever we'll see this move first okay then we can play rook f7 check the king might be played on uh, h6 that is the only square and now we can simply play bishop f4 in this position there is only one move that is king to h5 and now leading to rook h7 check and mate so this is the checkmate so queen cannot really give up the control of the e5 square that's why queen into b4 is not a possible move okay so he plays rook 8 c5 trying to defend the position but this did not really help him now rook f8 check came king into h7 and now queen into e4 check king g7 well what happens if you capture here on queen into f8 it leads to the same thing after bishop e5 which we just looked at so that is not a good idea okay we cannot really capture the queen there king into h7 queen e4 was checked king was uh, played on g7 and now bishop into e5 check well here king captures on f8 that is one of the only moves in this position and now the queen on e7 is having the only support that is the king on f8 so he plays a very simple and a very good tactical move that is bishop g7 check and now the king if it moves here obviously queen into e7 is a check and mate and in the game king g8 was played and after queen into e7 black decided to throw in the towel and that's why he is in this way well i hope that you enjoyed this beautiful game which uh, lasted for just 33 moves and the great black death was uh, completely killed in this game by great zucker todd well if you like this video don't forget to subscribe to our channel also like this video guys we will be meeting with very interesting game in the next coming video till then take care and goodbye